guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is Thursday and it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. Now we're taking a break from the creativity sessions this week. They will return next week. It's just that uh, I'm currently filming this on the Tuesday. I'm heading to Blackpool for a few days because Ryan is performing at the House of Secrets. So I haven't had time to actually film one of those for this week. It will return next week. But instead, it's actually happened at a good, a good time because I wanted to talk about something else instead. And it's kind of a review, but it's not really a review. It's kind of my viewpoint on something, but it's not really my viewpoint on something. It's kind of magic news. So what I want to talk about today is a new trick that's just been released at the Blackpool Magic Convention by Mark Travisoni, which is called Unboxed. Now, I have had so many people message me asking me to talk about Unboxed by Mark Travisoni, how it's different to The Extractor by, uh, by Peter Nardi and Alec Azam, and especially The Extractor 2 that got relaunched at Blackpool this year, and also give my opinion on the controversy that's happened between Saturn Magic, Monster Magic, the Alexander Decova release, just everything. So this video is going to be part review and part viewpoint. And I've got some, I've got a kind of an interesting take on this. Now, before I start, before I get into this, I've been planning this video for a week. I never jump into anything. I always like to get um, I always want to know exactly what my thoughts are before I make a video like this, which is why I'm not always the first person to review anything, because I need to learn it. I need to figure out how it works. I need to go out and try it on people. Uh, and so I'm never really the first person to review anything. And it's the same with this sort of video. I was poking around on the Magic Cafe asking questions about this last week on the uh, thread about Unboxed. And as soon as I started asking questions... Somebody went on there and said, do you have a beef with Mark Travisoni? And Mark was getting very defensive as well about the questions that I was asking, even though I was being quite uh, polite and I wasn't like ranting or anything about, about anything I was asking. So I want to make it very, very clear, because I know there's going to be people saying this. Um, my opinion is only my opinion. Obviously, I've worked with the extractor for years so I am biased towards the extractor. I absolutely am. And there are uh, a lot of uh, similarities between the extractor and, uh, and, and Unboxed. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Obviously, I'm going to be biased in that direction. But just because I work for Alakazam doesn't mean that I've got a beef with Mark Travisoni. In fact, exactly the opposite. I've had Mark on, on this channel many times. I've interviewed Mark on the Talk Magic. I've interviewed him and Mark Infinity uh, for videos promoting their tricks before Blackpool. Me and Mark Infinity have busted heads a couple of times, but you know I've got no problem with anyone at Saturn Magic. Uh, absolutely not a problem. What you're getting here is my opinion on the situation, both with the extractor and also with the abstractor. If you don't know what we're talking about, I'm going to get into it right now. So, the extractor, the original extractor, got released by uh, Alakazam many, many years ago. And it is, uh, well, I, if you go back and look at these videos over the last couple of years, uh, ever since I started doing Magic TV, you will hear over and over again me saying, I think that the best trick ever created is The Extractor by uh, Peter Nardi. I just really think it is. I've been doing The Extractor for years um, and years and years and years. And for, there was a small period of time where it wasn't available anymore and it wasn't available in, in, uh, in Alakazam. But that, that, for the last year, it's been available within their shop. You've been able to ring up and actually buy it directly from Alakazam. And at Blackpool this year, they bought out The Extractor Deck 2 or the E2. Uh, which is basically exactly the same thing, um, but you can change the box that it's in so it can work with any uh, any back design. Um, yeah, so the extractor deck, uh, one of the things I love about it is the tutorial. The tutorials are mammoth. When it was originally a DVD, I think it came on two DVDs. The new version of the Extractor 2 has got so much material. You've got the original material by, uh, by Peter Nardi, and by um, Mark Spellman, X, 
Uh, but there's a bunch of other stuff as well. In fact, uh, Pete's asked me to put some routines together uh, for the project that he's going to add to the uh, the extractor, and I'm more than happy to do so. I've been using the extractor for so long, I've got a bunch of stuff that I use it for that's a little bit different to what you might have seen before. So the extractor is brilliant, and I've told this story in interviews, but I'll say it again. I'll never forget the first time that I saw the extractor deck. I was at the Blackpool Magic Convention, and Peter Nardi showed at me in the Ruskin, and I have never been more fooled in my entire life. I just didn't have anywhere to go. And that Blackpool, the thing that everybody was talking about was the extractor deck. Now, if you don't know what the extractor deck is, and I think it's really important to talk about the extractor deck because Unboxed is obviously based on it. When you talk about the extractor deck, um, what it is basically, it's a deck of cards uh, that lives inside a card box and you switch this deck in. So you start with a regular deck of cards, you have somebody pick a card from a regular deck, you then give them the card and you give them the pen and you box the deck and you say, look, I'm gonna turn around so I can't see what the signature is. You've got all the time in the world to switch that box deck for the extractor deck. And when they turn back round, it looks like exactly the same deck, but you've done a switch. It's the easiest deck switch in the world because everyone's focusing on the card uh, they're not focusing on you. And there's a million different ways of doing that switch, but that's the easiest way. You then have the card uh, inserted, and this is the beautiful thing about the extractor deck. You can then open up the card box, you have the card inserted, they push it in anywhere they want to, they push it all the way in, they close up the box, they do everything. You can then show the box, you can put it away, and instantly you've got a peek of their card and you can steal their card out, even though they pushed it into the middle of a deck of cards. That's basically what the extractor deck is, right? Um, and it works very, very reliably 100% of the time. I've had my original extractor for years and uh, and it's, it's just as good. So that's what the extractor deck is. The real goal with the extractor deck of the tutorials, there are so many routines and there's so many concepts taught with the extractor deck, it almost makes your head turn. So that brings us to Blackpool 2024, which is where we're at right now. So at the Blackpool Magic Convention 2024, uh, Peter Nardi bought out, Peter Nardi and Alakazam bought out a new version of the extractor deck, basically the same thing with more routines. And Mark Traversoni bought out Unboxed, and this is what the review's on. Now, if you're wondering about the Alexander Decova Monster Magic thing, that's a separate issue. The comparison comparing Unbox to uh, the Extractor Deck is a completely different thing to, uh, to, to, to what happened on the Magic Cafe with Monster. We'll get to that in a minute. First of all, the review. So what is Unboxed? So basically, Unboxed is um, a way of doing the Extractor Deck, but without using the Extractor Deck. Now, Mark has openly said that one of the reasons that he's brought this to market is because the Extractor Deck wasn't available for a while and so he wanted to come up with a way of actually doing that. Fair enough. So what, what Unboxed is, is it's, it's a deck of cards. I, I don't want to give anything away, so I have to be very careful with what I say here. It's a, it's a deck of cards. Um, the, the, every card is gimmicked except for one or two, depending on the routine that you're going to go for with this. Um, but, but it's a deck of cards. Every card is, uh, uh, is gimmicked. And what it allows you to do is basically do the same thing as the extractor in that you can have a card picked, um, and you can do a deck switch. So you can do, you can basically do the same routine that I just explained to you. So you can have a regular deck in play. You can have a card picked. They can take the card out. You can then put the card back inside the box um, uh, and they can put it in anywhere they want to. When the card goes in, um, you can take the deck, put the deck away, get a peek of the card and you can then steal that card out. It's a lot more low tech than the instructor. It's a lot more low tech. Um, in fact, one of the selling points of Unboxed is if you ever lose it, you could make your own. Like you really could make your own if you wanted to. Um, so it's, it, it's a lot more low tech. The extractor deck, you would never be able to make yourself. You'd just never be able to make yourself. But 
um, unboxed, you could make yourself. You could absolutely replace the deck, 100%. Um, so, that, so there's that. Now, the big advantage that Mark Travisoni says is the big advantage to unboxed is that you can do it without the deck switch. So in order to do it without the deck switch, you still have a gimmick deck in play. So to do it without a deck switch, you can do it without a deck switch, absolutely, 100%. To do it without a deck switch, what you have to do is you have to take the deck, uh, the deck set inside the box. You bring the box out, you put the box to one side. Um, you can't spread through the cards, so you can't have a card picked. Um, you can't have the card shuffled by the spectator. You can't really, you wouldn't really, you can't change the order of the cards either. The cards are static really, in order to do this version. The cards are just set as they are. Um, you are in a situation where it's going to be very difficult for you to show the cards very freely beyond what you need to do to have the card picked. And what you need to do to have the card picked is to riffle down the deck, have them say stop, and then take the card, push it forward. And, and you're going to see a performance of this in a second. Uh, push it forward, have the card looked at. They sign the card. Uh, as they're sounding the card, the cards go back into the box and then you put the cards inside the box, you put their card inside the box and you're into the same situation. Um, so you can absolutely 100% do um, the extract, you can do the extractor routine, the basic extractor routine with unboxed without doing a deck switch. There are, however, a few problems inherent with doing that. So the first problem is you can't show the deck very freely at all. So it's not like you could have the cards, you know, if you're in a walk around situation, you couldn't have the cards um, shuffled. You can't spread through the cards. You couldn't shuffle the cards. You can't really even show the cards. I worked out a way of being able to spread the cards out and show the faces. Um when I was playing around with the deck. So you could kind of show the faces, um, but you have to be very tight about it. You have to be kind of really careful because a, a big portion of the deck is gimmicked. I don't want to say how it's gimmicked, but a big portion of the deck is gimmicked, which really kind of affects what you can and what you can't do with this deck, right? Uh, but yes, you could, in essence, have a card picked from the deck, have it signed, have the cards put back in the box. Right, yes, you can. So, let's talk about the... Uh, the in fact, I, I don't know how much performance footage I've got, um, but I'm definitely going to get... Because I'm filming this before I've got the performances. But let's have a look at a performance here of the extractor deck, and let's have a look at a performance here of the unboxed. So you can see kind of the two different variations. So we're going to have a look at a performance video of both of the different routines. All right, guys, so uh, you're about to see a performance of Unboxed. This is the switch handling. So this is the uh, the kind of the main handling for Unboxed. Uh, the video you're watching I filmed last night, I've come into the office this morning just so I can get a couple of performances with Jack. Jack, how you doing, buddy? All right. Uh, I got a pen, I got a deck of playing cards. Uh, I should point out to you guys, by the way, I don't have a card to wallet or anything with me, so I've put together a little presentation for this. Uh, obviously, you know that you can do anything with this that you want to. We've already talked about this in the review, but this is just a really simple uh, kind of performance of it that allows you to see kind of how it looks in a real world performance. So, Jack, I've got a deck of cards here. Uh, they're all there, they're all different. Um, look, Jack, uh, I bet you every deck of cards I own now has at least five signatures from Jack. There you go, Jack. Oh, for God's sake. Look, you, you, Jack, Jack, you sign, you sign so many cards, buddy. It's ridiculous. I'm still doing card tricks on <laughs> Well, you're going to pick another one now. Do you want to shuffle them first or are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. okay. So grab any card you want to. It's completely your choice. I don't really care. Uh, any card. I'm going to grab one that's already signed. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> Okay. You got one? So I'm going to give you the pen and I want you to sign the name in big letters on the face of the card. Can you do that for me? Write your name in big letters on the face. And I also have a, a coin which I'm going to grab out. Here we go. Okay. You got that? Yep. 
put the lid on the pen, because if you get pen on my close-up pad, I might have to kill you. There we go. You drop the card, don't worry, nobody noticed. It's, it's, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I've also brought this coin out as well. Can you check the coin, make sure it's okay? Uh, nothing weird about it. Make sure it's what it appears to be, just a normal half dollar. Honestly, the dexterity that you, you possess is... I've got Parkinson's, <laughs> Right. Sure, my lunch <laughs> I, hey, you're the one that's going to get cancelled, not me. So that's fine. Um, Sorry, I got a chance. You take the uh, you take the card, and you can put it back anywhere into the pack that you want to. It's completely up to you. You can put it in the middle, at the top, at the bottom. I don't really care. I just don't care. I don't care. All the way in like that. Is that fair? Yep. And I'm going to close it up. So now we have a situation where somewhere in this deck. Somewhere, I don't know where, I saw you put it around about the halfway point, but I don't know exactly, but somewhere in there is a card with your name on it, right? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of magicians will use sleight of hand to try and find somebody's card. I'm not going to do that. <coughs> Have a look at that coin again, because you'll notice that the coin actually has Kennedy on one side. Can you see that? I do. And Kennedy is actually really cool, and I'll tell you for why. Because Kennedy, you probably don't realise this, but when he was alive, he was a magician as well. And not just any magician, he was a mind reader. President um, Kennedy was a magician. Yeah, didn't you know that? He was a mind reader. I can't say that, no, no, look, you, I'm, hang on. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Kennedy, President Kennedy. Uh, could you tell me the name of Jack's card, please? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, I don't want this to go wrong. No, he says he's got it. He says, uh, now think about this for a minute. You could have took any card. You pushed it into the middle of your deck yourself. I didn't do anything. He tells me the card's the Jack of Spades. How did he do? How did he, what? Was that the card? Was it the Jack of Spades? It was the card. <gasps> amazing. But he was more of a magician than a mind reader. Do you know why? He did this amazing trick where he could turn into anything. In fact, you remember you put your card into the middle of the deck? You're not going to believe this because now, Mr. Kennedy, President Kennedy, has turned into one card, not just any card, but your signed card. What? I know, crazy, right? Great trick. So that is a performance of Unboxed, using a switch. Now let's look at the version that doesn't use a switch. So we're going to do the, uh, the version of uh, Unboxed now that requires no switch. Let's have a look at this. Uh, Jack, we've got a pack of playing cards and you, uh, also a pen. Uh, and I'm going to show you something kind of special. Would you like to see something absolutely amazing? Sure. Let's do something absolutely amazing. So first of all, <coughs> you can see the cards are all there. You can see they're all different. 52 cards, 52 possibilities. And you're going to pick one of these cards. So as I go down through the deck, anytime you want to, just say stop. Stop. I'm going to push that card forward and give it to you. Have a look at that card. Do not forget it. Very, very important you remember the card. Are you happy with that card? Can I show the camera? Uh, yes, of course you can. Yes, by all means. I'm going to put the rest of the cards away inside the box. Don't need them. Well, I will need them, but I'm putting them away in the box. Can you sign your card for me? That would be amazing. You done? Yep. Okay, good. And we're going to take the card, and you're going to put it into the deck, but you can put it anywhere you want to, mate. There's, it, it's completely up to you, in the middle, at the top, at the bottom. I don't really care. I'm completely indifferent to your choice right there, Gone, but not forgotten. So, hopefully you remember the card, because if you forget it, it's not a very good trick. I've You're going to remember the card. the card. So I said I was going to show you the difference between, <coughs> um, uh, between magic and mind reading. So mind reading is all about knowing what the card is, and me extracting the information out of you. That's what it, what it is. So what I want you to do is concentrate on the card. Say the card over and over again, not out loud, in your head. If you say it out loud, that's not mind reading, that's listening. Say it over and over and over in your head. Like seven of diamonds, 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 seven of diamonds. Was your card the seven of diamonds? It was. Come on, that's pretty impressive, Michael. What do you reckon? I literally extracted the information out of his head. But I said I was going to show you magic. Watch this. Watch. 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 That's so good. Bad joke. Watch. One, two, three. Did you see it happen? If I told you a card was here, would that be good? Would there want a card there? Yeah, but now there is. Oh, cut your hands together for me, Jack. See, the card is actually in the, uh, the lid of the pen <laughs> right there. There's uh, one card and one card only folded up. Take that card out. You're not going to believe it. Could it be? It can't be. Jack, that's hey. the seven of diamonds that you pushed into the pack yourself. It's a miracle. So that's the... Um, 
That's the switch version. That's the non-switch version, so there's no deck switch in play for that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the performance of the uh, extractor by Alakazam. Now, unfortunately, I can't find my extractor anywhere. So at some point in the next week or so, I'll, I'll film a magic live so you can see my performance of the extractor. But uh, for now, I'm going to show you a video of Peter Nardi doing this with Mark Spellman. Uh, so, because, like I said in the in the review, one of the big things about uh, the extractor deck is the tutorial that comes with it, and it's not just, hey, this is how to look at the card, this is how to peek it, this is how to take it out. There's a lot more to it than that as well, and I think this performance really kind of hammers home that. So, let's have a look at a performance of uh, uh, of the extractor done by Peter Nardi and Mark. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to riffle my fingers down the pack line, so you're going to say stop anywhere you like, absolutely yep. anywhere. About there? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Take it. Yep. And do me a favour. Sign your name across the face of that card. I'm signing a lot of cards today, Pete. I hope you're not going to put these on eBay. I'm going to try not to, Mark. Tell me when you're done. Let me just get on the camera because it is. Oh, I won't say what it is, but it's, you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, uh, pop it back. Okay, there we are. All right. Somewhere in the middle. That is absolutely great. You're so good at that. I it's know. Sort of I'm quite really, a, I'm it's really quite a clever thing. Yeah. Mark, if I could tell you what card you were thinking of, what card you selected, what card you signed, yeah. would you be impressed by I that? I would be impressed by that. How impressed? Well, it would be good. I mean, I've lost it inside the middle of the deck under test conditions. I mean, surely... There's... What if I could have predicted what card you were thinking of? Or what card you selected? Ahead of time? Ahead of time. No way. I want to show you something. Please? It's called my Miracle Blue Pack. Where is that? It's here. A closed oh. pack of blue cards. Right. Now, there's something very, very important I want to show you here. Hold on to the box. Hmm. Now, I want you to see that every single card is in order. Right. Not only that, every single card has got a blue back. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Now, you selected one card at random. Yes. You signed one card. Yeah. Yeah. What was the card you signed? It was the Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. Look, the Seven of Diamonds, the Eight Day. of Diamonds, the Nine of Diamonds, the Ten, ten. of Diamonds, the Jack oh. of Diamonds. There's one card face down. Not only that. It's got a blue, it's got a red back. Though. It has got a red back. So if I were just going to predict that you picked a red back card, which was the Queen of Diamonds, yep. that's amazing because that I predicted you clearly. were going to pick a red Absolutely. back card, and I predicted it was Queen of Diamonds was in place. But what if? What if? Turn it over. The cards you placed back in the red back deck anywhere you want it happens to be your side. Okay, so you've just seen the performance of the two routines. It's fair to say that if you were going to go up to a random member of the audience, just a random spectator, and you would do extractor on them, and then afterwards you did unboxed on them, they they would, in essence, be seeing the same trick. It's the same trick. It's also the same, it's not the same method, but the end result of the, is the same, which is a card is picked, it's put into the pack, you can get a peek, and then you can, um, uh, you can steal the card out as you put it away in your pocket. Right, that's basically uh, both of the decks. So they both do, in essence, the same thing. So what's the advantages and the pros and the cons? Well, it, look, at it, this is a review, in essence, of Unboxed. So let's look at Unboxed. So Unboxed, a negative for me, I want to talk about the pros and the cons, because there are pros, there are cons. Um, a negative for me is that, that Unboxed is a little bit more flimsy. Uh, and what I mean by that, without getting into how the box is gimmicked, the box is gimmicked in a certain way, that means that there is something happening that's going to ultimately I, I wreck the box. It's gonna. It's it's already. I've only been working with mine for a couple of days, two or three days, and and the bit that I need to do something with is already being affected. Right, if that kind of makes sense. So I think I'm going to have to replace the box soon if I carry on using unboxed. And if I want to replace the box, I can, but I'm going to have to gimmick up the box because the box is gimmicked as well. Um, so that's worth noting as well. The, bo the box is gimmicked. Um, so, so that's a negative. The other negative is when you've done, let, let's forget about the, 
non-switch handling for a minute and let's talk about the 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 main handling but you know mark does talk on the tutorial about the main handling being doing the switch which is the same as as extractor when you switch in the extractor deck you can show that deck all the way around so you could 360 show that deck all the way around you could show the front of it you could show the back of it you can be very very fair um at showing the box and then they push the card in with the uh with the unboxed uh, once you switch that deck in you can't show the deck all the way around because the box is gimmicked in such a way that if you looked at the box you would immediately see that it's gimmicked so you you can't be very clean after the switch at showing the box now when you push the card into the deck there's a little bit more surface that you can show on unboxed it's a little bit not that much i mean to be honest it doesn't really make that much of a difference because with extractor you push the card into the deck and it's immediately going to going to go into your pocket but uh i've got a deck here this is not an extractor deck but to give you an idea if i was doing extractor and the card was going into the deck like this if I wanted to show the other side of the card box at that point, I would have to hold it like this. Not that you ever would, because when you put the card back into the deck with extractor, you put it in there like that. They can put it in wherever they want to and you immediately go to put the card in your pocket. You know, there's no need to show anything. But if you were going to show the other side, you'd have to show it kind of like that. Now, with unboxed, it's the same sort of thing in that once the card's gone in, you don't need to show the deck anymore. But if you were going to show the deck, you could show it perhaps like that. So you get a little bit more of surface area that you can show when you put the cards in the box, uh, in the pocket versus the extractor deck. So that's a positive, right? That's a plus. Uh, although you don't really show the other side of the box at any point, that would, there's no need. So that's not really too much of a, a, of a problem either way, but it is an advantage. If you want to be very clean and, you know, the card goes in and then you want to show it like that, you're going to see a little bit more of it with, with, with Unbox than you are with the extractor. So there's that. Um, the the, the extractor is going to last longer. Um, it is going to last longer. Fact. Uh, it, it, it's a more robust gimmick. Uh, the, the gimmick is inside the box. Uh, the, the the unboxed deck is loose, if that kind of makes sense. It has to be for what you're doing with it. So the un, the unboxed deck is loose. Uh, the un, is 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 loose while the extractor deck is fixed. The extractor deck will last longer. But on the flip side, uh, Mark tells you that you could very easily, you know, like replace cards in there or replace your deck, uh, which you could, right? You could. Uh, however, he does say the uh the cards are, are coated with a special substance i don't really see the purpose of that substance to be perfectly honest uh they are coated with a certain substance i don't really see the need for that substance i don't see why it's there but whatever it is there okay um but he he kind of talks about what that substance is as well um and, and what that does is when he's spreading the deck he he it means that uh they're easier to uh, they they go they go in clumps basically is is what uh, is is what that stuff does. So then we talk about the big advantage of unboxed, which is the fact that you can do it without a switch. Now you can do it without a switch. I don't see why anybody would want to do it without a switch. Now Mark talks about uh, people are scared of doing switches, and that's the thing that he's really kind of talking about that people some people newer magicians are scared of doing switches and because they're do, scared of doing switches being able to do everything with one deck is a massive advantage now i can understand where he's coming from uh, a deck switch is a scary thing even though this is probably the easiest deck switch you'll ever do in the entire world because you're switching a deck in a box for a deck in a box while they're signing a card there's no heat on you at all but whatever um so the no switch handling um, is designed for people who are scared of switch, uh, switching decks. But if somebody is worried about switching a deck, I would be even more concerned about handling this deck 
because it you do have to be very very cozy with it right you do have to be very very cozy with the deck uh because the, it's it's gimmicked the the whole deck is gimmicked like i said so you have to be very cozy and you have to uh be able to do a force so that's the other thing when you uh in order to do the no switch handling there's one card that they can take in the deck. There's two regular cards. There's one that's like a uh, a cover card, and there's one regular card, and the rest are gimmicked. So you have to force the regular card. Now, the card starts out somewhere in the middle, and because of the nature of the deck, it is quite easy to get the break that you need. And so you could do something like a, a Riffle Force, for example. Uh, but you couldn't just do a Riffle Force and give them the card. You're going to expose how the deck is gimmicked. So you kind of have to do some sort of crisp alignment move or something like that. Um, and then you can put the cards in the box and then the card can go back in and you're into the same sort of situation, right? I just don't think anybody would use that. And it was kind of interesting on the, uh, I have my laptop for this reason. It was kind of very interesting that on the, uh, the page. So this is the secret section of the, of Saturn Magic where they have the tutorial on there. And there's a whole bunch of videos and, uh, loads and loads of videos um ba, 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 and additional tips under additional tips mark writes i have been demonstrating unboxed a lot with the no switch handling um i normally do it with a switch so no switch is not something i've done a lot and i stumbled across a nice way to make the reset of putting the cards back in the deck when you're using the tick card quicker uh there's an extra video about using something that they didn't put in the main tutorial but the point is he says in here i normally do it with a switch so no switch is something that i haven't done a lot and honestly i think that most working pros would go for the switch most most people i think would go for using a switch the beauty of the original extractor deck is that um the, 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 you've got a couple of decks in your pocket and the switch is just done completely on the offbeat, completely on the offbeat. I look at the extractor deck and unboxed as a utility tool. It's a utility tool that's going to give the audience the impression of having the card put down into the middle of the deck and then immediately you put the cards away and you're going to steal the card. Uh, I look at it as a utility and, and I just think that doing a switch is absolutely the best way to go with this. So I don't see much advantage over the fact that we have a method here for using one deck. I don't think that's needed at all. Um, but, you know, hey, he is right. You can't do a no switch handling with the extractor. You can do a no switch handling with, with, with unboxed. So if you're looking to do it and actually not switch the cards, then unbox might be the one you, that you want to go for. But you have to marry that with the fact that the deck is flimsier and I think it will break over time. Uh, not break, break's the wrong word. I'm making it sound like it's got invisible thread. I'm being very careful. I can't, I don't want to say what it is, but um, the extractor, I think anybody who's got the extractor and compares the extractor to unboxed will tell you that uh, uh, the extractor is more robust let's use the word robust the extractor is more robust so that's the review of um unboxed we'll talk about the alexander dikova thing in a minute look this is not a bad trick um, this is a regular deck unboxed is not a bad trick i don't think it's needed i don't think it kind of uh, in my opinion i don't think it kind of adds that much to the plot i think it does exactly the same thing that uh um, that extractor does and I don't think that very many people are going to use the no switch handling I just really don't but it is a different method it is a different method uh, of, of obtaining the information or obtaining the peak uh, it's a different way of doing it I, I, you know it is different it's not like it's a direct ripoff at all by any stretch of the imagination extractor deck works in a different way to unboxed it's just that unboxed and extractor look the same from the audience's point of view. But there is a difference from a magician's point of view. So I'm going to give, I mean, obviously, I've spoken about extractor before. It gets 100%. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. This gets 65%, uh, maybe 60, yeah, 65%. It's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. 
I could see people buying this and being very, very happy with it. The reason it gets a lower score from my point of view is because I, I prefer the extractor deck. I've been using it for years. One more thing to consider with Unboxed is the price is a lot cheaper because of how an extractor deck is made versus how an unboxed uh, deck is made. I imagine an unboxed deck is a lot easier to make and so therefore the price is a lot cheaper. So if you're looking to do a trick, if you don't have the extractor and you're tr looking to do a trick where you have a card picked and put into a deck and you can get that information, this, this will work. This will absolutely work. I personally prefer the extractor. And, and I think that one of the big reasons to go for the extractor over unboxed is the tutorial. The real gold is in the tutorial. There are so many wonderful routines that you can do with the extractor as part of their tutorial that you can't do with unboxed. A lot of the stuff that they really kind of, a lot of the applications that Mark and, and Peter really kind of dive deep into, you can't do that with unboxed. And even if you could do it with Unboxed, which you can't, they wouldn't be able to teach it because that's part of the tutorial that was put together for Extractor, if that kind of makes sense. And, and the tutorial for this is quite short. I think it's about 50 minutes, something like that. A couple of extra bonus videos that they've added afterwards, but it's about maybe an hour or something. Uh, and they talk about other applications of it. You can put it into this wallet. You can do it with that. You can Mercury card fold it. You can do this. You can do that. They talk about other applications, but with the extractor, you've got multiple hours of live performances and you've got multiple hours of um, tutorial teaching fully fleshed out routines. So for me, you know, you're not gonna, you know, I, I, you know I love well thought out tutorials. For me, that's one of the big advantages over the extractor deck. Honestly, the amount of content that you get from a tutorial point of view is worth the price of the extractor alone. But if you want something very simple uh, that does the same thing and it's like, hey, this is what it is, this is what it does, you can steal a card out, here's a couple of ideas of how to use it, and you wanna pay less, Unboxed is not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I can see people liking it. It's just I prefer the extractor for all the reasons I said. So there you go. That's the review. Now we need to get on to Monster Magic. So let me go a little bit further. Let me just, this is why I've got the laptop because I don't want to misquote people because a lot of people will ask me my opinion on this as people tend to do and I tend to avoid a lot of this stuff. But I'm not avoiding this um, because so many people have asked me to talk about it. So we're going to talk about it. So... This all kicked off on the 26th of March at 1.17. Um, Monster Magic, Alex, obviously, who used to work at Prop Dog, now works at Monster Magic, um, and said uh, this post on Facebook. News, unboxed by Travisoni, removed, capital letters. I know some of you are aware that unboxed by Mark Travisoni was briefly on the Monster Magic website and then shortly after it vanished. This is because the product is not original. The construction method and effect are essentially the same as the abstractor by Alexander Dikova. As a magic dealer, I felt I had no option but to remove it from the site because I don't believe Mark Travisoni has the rights to produce it. Abstractor is by Alexander Dikova and was first published in Scrapbook Magazine issue 3 in 2014 and later in his book Burners 1 in 2015. Although Mark does mention previous effects that are similar, such as Extractor by Alakazam and the Swiss Project by Brandon David and Chris Turchi. Haven't seen the uh, Swiss Project, so I can't comment. Um, uh, he doesn't give any credit to Decova, so I assume he's not asked permission for this release. So that was posted on the 26th of March. Um, and that kicked off on the cafe uh, quite quickly because somebody uh there was a, a thread well there still is a thread on the magic cafe about this particular product um and uh da, 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 da. uh mark goes on there and says that it sold out in murphy's in three days which is humbling blah 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 um somebody then posted a link through to the monster magic facebook post um there's a guy called Tony Robertson who hasn't made many posts on the Magic Cafe 21. Um, 
and is quite uh, quite a negative chap when it comes to Alex from Monster Magic. He's like, uh, Alex hasn't removed it because it's a copy as it's totally not. Also, we saw it in Blackpool, so why bother stocking it in the first place if you thought that you had? That's flawed thinking. Who cares what Alex thinks anyway? It's quite rude to Alex. And... Um, uh, Mark comes on and says, unboxed is different, so this is not the same. Um, and he then says, I've just spoken to Alex about his post and claims, and he admitted they are not the same. We discussed unboxed, maybe similar to abstractor, but the principles of play are not the same. Unboxed is different in quite a substantial way. He said he was not sure if it was substantial enough, but it is and makes a big difference to how it works. In summary... Alex's post that unboxed is the same is a complete untruth. Okay. And then this Tony Robinson then comes on and says, uh, Alex is wrong and should do his homework before stocking a product. Um, uh, make many people take his views with the tiniest pinch of salt anyway. Uh, it's just really rude, this guy. Uh, a giant cock end. Um, not Mark, this, this Tony bloke. Um, Da, 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 da. And then, uh, you know, there's people going back and forth, as you would expect on the Magic Cafe. And Tony and Saturn are... Tony and Mark Travisoni from Saturn are really kind of uh, defending Unboxed, as you would expect them to, totally, 100%. Uh, but, but Alex posts, who says, Hi, just to clarify, I haven't changed my mind and I stand by my original post. I don't want to cause a row. But this release requires Decova's blessing at the very least. This is the last I'm going to say on the subject. Best wishes, Alex. So I kind of find it really weird that Mark Traversoni posted and said, whoa, 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 we've talked about this. And Alex agrees that he was wrong. And Alex says, no, no, I'm not wrong. I don't know where that's come from. Um, and then people are asking how they're different. And Mark says... First of all, they handle differently. Unboxed can't be fanned or handled like Alexander's. Um, there are no magnets in Unboxed. And I love the way Tony worded this. There's an ingredient that makes Unboxed so different. Um, key differences and those differences make Unboxed works. Uh, no, And then a lot of people are coming to Alex's defence, including myself, because honestly, um, this guy Tony is a dickhead. Uh, and then Mark starts posting uh, reviews and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And Tony, uh, Andy keeps getting involved. Um, and then <laughs> Andy comes on and says he won't even be a dealer in five years. His review show will be out the water literally in even less time. The man barely earns enough to keep himself afloat as it is. Um, I, um, but the, <laughs> I, honestly, this guy, Andy Craven, if you're listening to this, Andy, you're a dickhead. Um, I've already explained as much. Okay, so um, I asked what was the difference, and Mark said, I've already explained above as much as I can what the difference is between Unboxed, and Alex said it was not the same. Now he says it is when it isn't. We seem to be going around in circles and people listening to those that are making factually incorrect statements. Unbox does not handle the same and is not constructed the same as Alexander's. How much clearer can I make it? Um, and then I went on and said, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. We were, we, uh, various different people went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth trying to figure out what's going on. And it ended up being mainly an argument between Andy Craven and the rest of the Magic Cafe. So that's where we're at. So basically... Monster Alex, who's very knowledgeable, and by the way, I've had a run-in with Alex in the past. I, I consider Alex a good guy. I consider him a friend. I also think he's ethically, his moral compass is pointing due north, probably more than most people in this industry. And, you know, he's not afraid to state his mind when he was working a prop dog. I remember him uh, doing a review of uh, Quantum Deck, and he didn't particularly like it. Um, and he was talking about how it was... Uh, I can't remember now, similar to something or something in something, I, I can't remember. He's very outspoken. Uh, Alex tends to uh, be that way. And it can be frustrating, so I understand why Mark could be getting frustrated about this. I totally get it. But he's brought up the point, is it similar to the abstractor? Uh, is it similar? 
And this is kind of a really important thing that I want to talk about. I'm going to look at this laptop again in a bit, but let's just put it down for a second. This is a really important thing that I want to talk about. So I went out and I bought the Abstractor. It is very easy to find. It is available on library.com, the magazine that it was published in. I think I bought it for £6 or something like that. Um, so it's very easy to find and it's very easy to buy. I found it by doing one Google search. I'd never seen it before. Uh, I'm not aware of all of Alexander Dekova's material, to be perfectly honest. And I'd never read any of these magazines. So, uh, <laughs> however, I'm now going to buy all of them because I think they're amazing based off reading this one. But uh, it's very easy to find the abstractor and it's very easy to find the listing on library.com and it's very easy to buy it. If you've ever bought anything from library.com, you know how easy it is. So I bought the abstractor, read it. Obviously, I have unboxed, watched it, right? So, let me explain what the differences are because I think it's really important. I'm not going to expose anything, so please don't worry, but I think it's really important that you understand from an impartial outsider looking in, I'm going to tell you what the differences are. First of all, the core method is very very similar. Forget about the extractor right now. When I when I was reviewing Unbox with the extractor, I said that the extractor and Unbox look the same from the spectator's point of view, but they're very different from a methodology from a magician's point of view, right? That's not the case with Unbox and Abstractor. Um, they both involve gimmicking in the deck in almost the same way. I say almost the same way. There is a very small difference. There is a thing that you have to do to every card. And that thing is done in a slightly different way with the abstractor than it is with um, uh, Unboxed. But in essence, it's the same thing. So when you have the deck um, prepped, the gimmick is in the same. The thing that you've done to the deck is in the same place, right? So the actual deck, how the deck is gimmicked, is the same. How the box is gimmicked is the same. Here's the difference. There's two differences. The first difference is Mark Traversoni and Saturn Magic made the decision to prepare the cards with unboxed with a particular type of substance, which means that when you spread them out, they don't spread properly. Now, I remember watching the tutorial before knowing any of this stuff with the abstractor and thinking to myself, why has he prepared the cards like that? That doesn't make any sense. I don't see how this helps the routine at all. Um, and uh, that's the main difference from Mark's point of view. The main difference is every card in the deck, in the abstractor deck, in the unbox deck, has been treated with a particular substance, which makes it, when you, you can't just spread them out, you wouldn't be able to do a, uh, a table spread, for example. Um, but I don't see why that is needed in the deck. I really don't. Because if that substance wasn't on the cards, you would still be able to do the routine perfectly well as evidenced by the abstractor, because the routine that Mark does with the switch is identical to the routine that is done with the abstractor. The only difference is the cards can spread because they don't have this substance on them. In fact, excuse me, I went to the trouble of making an unboxed deck using the abstractor gimmicking so it was a slightly different way of gimmicking the deck but I made a deck of cards up um and I I did the routine as explained by Mark Traversoni and not having those substance on not having that substance on the card cards made no difference whatsoever the second thing that's different do you remember when I talked earlier on about how with Unboxed, one of the issues is that the box is gimmicked in such a way that there's something that happens to the end of the box that will cause it to need to be replaced because there's something that's happening. So when you put it into your pocket, um, in order to get the steel, something has to happen. And if you keep doing that certain something, 
what's going to happen is the the, 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 the box is going to get wrecked and you're going to have to do a new box. Alexander Dekova's abstractor has the exact same gimmick in the, of the box, but he goes through putting a couple of magnets in particular positions so that that part of it locks shut. Now, there's a couple of advantages over that. The first advantage is, and I forgot to say this as a negative when I did the review versus the extractor, but this is a real, a real negative. Because of how unboxed works, if you are putting the cards away in a pocket, there is a chance that those cards could fall out of that deck relatively easily because there's nothing stopping the exit. But the, the, obviously, you know, with unboxed, in order for it to work, you have to extract a card from the deck, right? You get that. The, the card has to be removed from the deck. So the way that you remove the card from the deck could very easily cause every other card to fall out the deck as well and into the pocket. Now, by adding the magnets, which Alexander de Kova has done, that then effectively stops that problem from happening. It also means that it's not flapping around and it's locked in place until you need it. Alexander de Kova has got this great way of unlocking the gimmick, which is just by squeezing the card box and the gimmick automatically opens and then locks shut because of the magnets that are in place. So the second way that the decks are different is the gimmicking of the box. The box is gimmicked in exactly the same way, but there's magnets in Alexander Dekova's version, which actually is beneficial. It's actually better. Having those magnets in place actually improves everything. Not having those magnets is a step back. Fact, right? So those are the only two ways. Those are the only two things. The way that the deck is gimmicked, the way that 51 cards in the deck are gimmicked, Forget about the substance that's put on the cards for a minute with Unboxed. 51 of the cards in the deck are gimmicked. The way that they are gimmicked is identical with the Extractor and with Unboxed. The way that the box is gimmicked is identical in both routines. The way that the Switch version works is identical. The only difference is Alexander's locks because of the magnets... And unboxed has a substance on it, which obviously, I believe Mark, Mark Travisoni believes 100% that that substance helps the trick. Fine. That's the one advantage. I don't think it does help the trick in any way, shape or form. But I believe that Mark believes it does. That's the one advantage. Okay, okay. so this is a, a performance of the Abstractor by uh, Alexander Dikova. So... Uh, Jack. Hello. Trick time. Uh, no, so exciting. Give those cards a shuffle for me if you can, please. That would be amazing. And when you shuffle, spread them out towards yourself so you can see them and I can't. Yeah. And what I want you to do is pick a card, any card. Okay. Okay. Have a look at the card. Remember it. Don't forget it. You got it? Yep. Good stuff. And uh, I have a pen here. Do me a favour. Take the pen and sign your name on the uh, on the card, on the face, not on your face, on the face of the card. I'm 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 hilarious on purpose. You know that, right? When does it start? Oh, ouch! It's terrible. Um, so I'm going to take your uh, I'm going to take the, the deck and pop it away inside the box. And what I want you to do is take the card and shove it somewhere uh, in the middle. But it's up to you where. You want it there? Beep. Nice. I love how you add your own little sound effects to this stuff. This is just amazing. Um, so concentrate on your card. I want you to imagine that that card... In fact, let's do this. Imagine that this is an invisible deck of cards. Right. Can you do that for me? Take the invisible deck. Imagine it's an invisible deck of cards. Then what I want you to do is imagine that you're, uh, you're opening them out and you take them out of the box. I want you to imagine that uh, you're spreading through the cards and you're putting, you're taking out the card. Excellent. And you can keep the rest of the cards as a souvenir. Now I want to imagine that you've got an invisible pen. I want to imagine that you've signed that invisible card on the face just like you signed the other card. And then I want you to imagine putting that card down there on the table and you can keep the invisible pen as well. 
Now, technically, everything <coughs> is done in your imagination. But if we could turn imagination into reality, I could turn that invisible card over, look at it, and immediately see it's the Six of Spades. That's your card, right? Is this my card? Yeah, because that card actually exists. It exists in your imagination, but it exactly exists in real life as well. That is genuinely an invisible card. See, it's right there. Look, right there. The one with your name on it, the Six of Spades. That's, that's, Where did that's, that just come from? It's right there. You put it on the table yourself. Did I? Yeah, it was, it was right there. You can keep that as a souvenir. There you go, Jack. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Thank you. You should be. So that is the abstractor, and I don't know how clear that is, but I mean, I changed the presentation compared to, you know, I've done three different presentations of basically the same trick now, but I don't know how clear that is, that that routine and the way that I actually got to that point is identical. The only difference is in uh, the abstractor, Alexander Dakova suggests do it. I did the switch version of the abstractor, not the... Um, non-switch version, but Alexander Dakova suggests that you'd switch the deck, not when it's boxed, but when it's not boxed. So the only difference between what you saw me do with Unboxed and what you saw me do here is with Unboxed, I cased the deck and then did the switch with the switch version. But with this, I did the switch of the deck, but put it back into the same box. That's the only difference. In terms of the handling, uh, it's identical. And also I want you to notice that that's a deck that I made myself in literally five minutes. And it's not being treated uh, with what uh, Mark and Saturn say is very, very important to make the trick work. It's had no treatment at all, and yet still I can do exactly what I need to do in order to make this work, which is kind of the point I was trying to make. Now, I say that's the one advantage. You could argue that in the tutorial, Mark Traversoni and Saturn talk about how to do it with no switch. We've discussed this before, right? Um, Yes, you can do it with no switch. However, in the magazine where the abstractor was published, Alexander Dekova also talks about how you can actually use the abstractor with no switch. Now, the difference that, that Alexander does is he suggests, you know, I said that every single card in the deck is gimmicked. I don't want to say how they're gimmicked, but every single card in the deck is gimmicked. Alexander suggests if you want to do it without a switch, you only have 26 of the cards gimmicked the bottom 26 cards of the deck and the top 26 cards are normal. So you can effectively shuffle the cards. Um, you can shuffle the top half of the cards. You could do any card trick that involves the top half of the deck and you can have a freer selection rather than forcing one particular card, you can spread through and you can take a card from the top half of the deck, have them sign it and then put the cards in the box and have the card go into the bottom half and say to them, just put it somewhere right down at the bottom of the deck somewhere and have them put it in the bottom half. Or you could have 15 cards on top that are regular and have them put it anywhere 16 cards down and say, put it to the middle, maybe a little bit further down. So Alexander goes through a way of doing it with no switch, which honestly, I think adding extra cards into the deck that are regular helps because then it means that you've got a freer selection of all of the cards. Now you couldn't do that with Unboxed because the cards are treated. And the cards are treated in such a way that it means you can't spread the cards out very effectively, which aids the trick in some way. I'm not really too sure how. Um, so so Ale the point I'm trying to make is Alexander Dekova in The Abstractor did talk about a no-switch method. He's also got a really clever way of doing it with an elastic band. So with the no-switch method or the switch method, when the card is put back inside the box, you can take two elastic bands, three elastic bands, wrap them all over the deck, all over the box. You've put the cards in the box. You've put the, they've put their card in the box. You wrap a bunch of elastic bands around and then you can show it and it's all wrapped up with elastic bands, but you've still got the peak and you've still got the steel. And that's partially because of the magnet that's in play there that allows you to do that. So the fact that you can do a switch and a no switch version with uh, unboxed isn't really brought into consideration because that's the same with abstractor. So in reality, the differences that Mark talked about on the Magic Cafe are literally, I, I, I can't see how anybody would argue that not having magnets to lock the deck in place 
is an advantage. I can't see how anybody would argue that. Anybody who sees these two methods side by side and you go, well, this is unboxed and, and, and the gimmick just flaps open and closed and you have to use your little finger to keep it in place when you're having the card put in because else it's going to open up versus, okay, this is the abstractor. It's locked in place because of the magnets. You don't have, you can be very free about where to put it in and just by squeezing, you're going to get access. I can't see why anybody would say that the lack of magnets is an advantage. It's an advantage having those magnets. So that just leaves the fact that the cards are treated on the back. That is the only difference between the abstractor and between uh, uh, unboxed. The fact that the cards are treated that allow them to not be spread as easily as Alexander Decova's abstractor. Those are the only differences. That's the only difference, right? So this now brings up an interesting discussion because, and this is where I go back to the laptop. This is where I, uh, this is where we get to an interesting discussion. And the reason we get to an interesting discussion is Mark is being very outspoken about the fact that unboxed and you know i've already explained above uh it, it, alex is wrong there are differences blah 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 he talks about that i don't see how uh hang on where is it do, 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 do. it's somewhere here um here we go first of all they handle differently unboxed can't be fanned or handled like alexander's because of the treatment on the cards, although I don't see why that's an advantage. There are no magnets in Unboxed, and I love the, which is a disadvantage, and I love the way Tony worded this. There is an ingredient that makes Unboxed so different. He's talking about the, uh, the treatment of the cards. So some key differences that make all the difference and make Unboxed work. It's exactly the same trick as far as I'm concerned. There's absolutely no difference. Now, um, I was interested in seeing that on the again i'm going back to the tutorial page on saturn magic i imagine that this is being added at the end later because uh it says additional credit it has been brought to our attention that alexander decova had an effect similar to unboxed that we were unaware of during its creation unboxed however does employ an extra principle in the roughing uh, which makes a huge difference in its use and therefore is an advance, uh, advancement of this type of idea. To the best of our knowledge, there have been no other decks that we know of that are done this way, which makes Unbox somewhat unique as a gaff deck. Um, I, I, okay, that's so he's added a credit, right? He's added a credit and said, hey, Alexander Decova's come up with something similar, but this is different because of the treatment of the cards, right? Okay, let's talk about double standards in magic for a minute, shall we? And the way that I'm going to talk about this, and this is really important. I think this is a real important issue. And I'm going to use something that I really don't want to, but I think it's the best way that I can actually get my point across here. I'm going to talk about red by myself, a.k.a. New Wave Prediction by Bob King. Everybody knows this story. This story has followed me around my entire career. The reason I left the magic community many, many years ago is because I copied New Wave Prediction by Bob King. Um, I didn't realise at the time that I copied it, but I did. It was a complete and total rip-off, and how I didn't see that at the time, I really don't know. But I did copy it, right? New Wave Prediction, red, is basically the same thing. I say basically the same thing because there is one difference between red... And, uh, and and new wave prediction. So new wave prediction is set up in a particular way. The deck is gaffed in a particular way that allows you to do this particular routine. Red is gaffed in a particular way that allows you to do this routine. But at the big, but with both decks because they're the same, you have to get somebody to think of a number card, not a picture card. So I added an extra phase at the beginning of the routine that deals with that and makes people feel like it's a free choice that um, they're picking a number card. So rather than just saying, think of a number card for me, will you? Don't think of a picture card, think of a number card. Instead of doing that, 
you're, you're, you have a reason for them thinking of a number card. It's an extra moment of magic. It's an extra phase that happens at the beginning of the routine. Now, I still think, for anyone who's got New Wave Prediction, adding that extra phase at the beginning improves the routine because it takes the negative of New Wave Prediction, which is the fact that you have to get them to think of a number card, and it, it takes it away, right? However, that wasn't enough. The magic community came down on me like a ton of bricks, rightfully so, and I had to leave the community because of everything that happened to me which is public knowledge at this point and i can't be asked to talk about it anymore but it follows me around even to this day whenever get anyone gets into an argument with me online you know and they're getting to the point where you know they haven't got any other points to make they go oh you stole red you are red you know it just it follows me around you know it, it, it always will I've, I've come to the point to understand that it always will and no amount of content creation no amount of work on my behalf will change that now, I made a change to New Wave Prediction. Not a big enough change, but I made a change. Magic Community came down with me like a ton of bricks. Within two days of this happening, World Magic Shop had reached out to Bob King, who had then sold the rights to Michael Weber, or at some point sold the rights to Michael Weber, reached out to Bob King, pulled the product from Murphy's and just got rid of them all, uh, which cost World Magic Shop thousands, um, returned all of the units that were sold, got rid of every single unit, and had spoken to Michael Weber about remuneration and then paid him X amount, a, a, a sum that he was happy with because by that point he was the rights holder. He owned the rights to New Wave Prediction. So within two days it had been taken down, Pulled off market completely. I'd, uh, I'd apologised. And even then still, I was kicked to the curb and ended up leaving the magic community. So, what we have here, and, and that was me making a change to the trick. Now, it wasn't a big enough change, and I totally agree with that. But I thought that change, and I still do, I thought that change added something to the routine but I hadn't spoken to uh, Bob King about it. Uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was a horrible situation. Surely, in this situation, why is it? So what, what I need to understand when I say double standards in magic, and I would not wish what happened to me with Red on anybody. I absolutely would not wish it on um, uh, Mark Traversoni or anyone at Saturn Magic, not in a million years. But I bring up red because it's the, it's the perfect way for me to illustrate a point, which is, in reality, what is the difference here? The new wave prediction existed before red. The abstractor existed before unboxed. People were annoyed with me over several different things. The first thing they were annoyed with me about was that I even bought the trick to market and that the change that I perceived was important enough to make didn't make a difference. Some people are annoyed at Mark Traversoni, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's not like it's caused a shitstorm. Life has gone on. Also, I don't think Mark has actually reached out to Saturn Magic, uh, to, to Alexander Dikova. Regardless of whether you think the differences are enough or not, there is no argument, as far as I can see, that Unboxed and Abstractor are pretty much identical with one or two very small differences that really don't make a difference in the grander scheme of things. Honestly, they really don't. He's put a credit on the Saturn Magic page. On the tutorial page, he's put a credit. Has he reached out to Alexander Dikova? Because one of the things that was said about me with Red is, why haven't you reached out to Bob King? Well, we did. We reached out to Bob King and we pulled the product in two days. Mark's not pulled the product. Mark's not pulled uh, Unboxed. In fact, he's gone one step further. Rather than pulling Unboxed, he's actually... You know, going out there going, well, we've sold out in Murphy's in three days. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, amazing. Well done. Good job. 
As far as I'm concerned, the magic community needs to make a decision. They need to decide whether to come down on people with a ton of bricks or not. Because if you don't, if we don't want to, that's absolutely fine. But but how is Mark? De uh, how is Alexander Dakova feeling about this? How is Alex feeling about this? How is Alex from Monster Magic feeling about this? Because basically, what he has is he has a bigger, more established magic dealer turning round to him and saying he's full of shit. He's gone and put his neck on the line, and he said, "I don't think this product is worth selling." I don't think that it should be sold. It's too similar to the abstractor unless, <coughs> excuse me, unless you reach out to Alexander Dakova. And then March just come on, probably rung him because he said, I've had a conversation with him and Alex is okay with it. And Alex is like, whoa, 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 I'm not okay with it. And now we've got people slagging Alex off in the Magic Cafe. We've got people slagging Alex off in the Magic Cafe because of something that Mark has started here. Now, you could say Alex has started it, but I don't think he has because, you know, Alex obviously feels passionate enough that he's pulled the product off his website. He's been left with units that he said he doesn't know how to get rid of them. He's been left with those units, but he still feels like this is an important thing to do. And rather than sit down with him and say, well, look, let me explain what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to contact Alexander Dikova. We're going to do this. We're going to make this right. No, it's just like, hey, you're wrong. I'm going to argue about this on the Magic Cafe. I'm also going to tell people that you're wrong. And not only that, when people slag you off and say that you should go out of business because you're, you know, you're not a very good magic dealer, I'm not going to make any comment about that. I'm not going to disagree with them. I'm just going to let people attack you. What the actual fuck? I've got no problem with Alex. I've got no problem with Mark, but that's a shitty attitude. Then people might say, well, hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe Mark doesn't think it's important enough. Maybe Mark thinks he's in the right. He doesn't have to contact Alexander Dikova because even though the two tricks are pretty much damn near identical, it's a big enough check. That's what he says in the thing. He says it's a big enough change. The treatment of the cards and the lack of the magnet makes it a big enough change that he doesn't need to contact Alexander Dikova. He doesn't need to get permission from Alexander Dikova. He doesn't need to do any of that. It's absolutely fine. It's not a problem. But let's talk about one thing, shall we? Let's talk about my favourite person, Peter Egging. Because last year... Peter Egging bought out eye candy, or a couple of years ago bought out eye candy. Now, eye candy was a routine that uh, involves like little sweets, little square sweets, what they call starbursts. And basically, it's a routine where a little bit like sponge balls, but with starburst candies, where sweets will vanish from one place and appear somewhere else, and vanish one place and appear somewhere else. And, they used a sort of an injection molded shell or a 3D printed shell um, that was uh, designed to fit over one of those candies. And you also got another gimmick that allowed you to do like a fickle nickel style vanish of a candy. Now, the problem was James Keatley, when he worked with Saturn Magic, bought out uh, a trick called Juicy a couple of years before which in essence was a very similar trick. Juicy, you got a bunch of different shells. So you got shells that fit on the side, you got shells that fit on the top, you got shells that fit in various different ways. There was a bunch of routines taught by James on the project and, and you get all of these shells. Now the shells were made out of cardboard. However, um, uh, Mark Travisoni was very unhappy about this and posted on the Magic Cafe. I was unhappy about this. I agreed with Mark at the time. Mark was, uh, Mark went on the cafe and said, you know what, I, I'm really not liking this whole eye candy thing because James Keatley bought out Juicy with Saturn Magic and it's too similar. It's too similar. There's not enough changes. Uh, and I actually agreed and I did a video on this saying, hey, Peter, what the hell are you talking about? Which is why by the way, for people that say, oh, Craig's got an issue with Mark Travisoni. I think Mark Travisoni is a great guy. Seen him perform, really good performer, uh, great creator. I've bought stuff from Saturn Magic in the past. I completely disagree. I stood up for Saturn Magic when this all happened a couple of years ago. Um, absolutely 100%. And I would again if something like this happened. But as far as I can see, this is another example of double standards. In the On the sales page 
on uh, Eye Candy. Go look at Eye Candy up by Peter Egging and look at it up on Saturn Magic. Just go into your Google machine, type in Eye Candy, Saturn Magic. You'll see a statement by, uh, by Saturn Magic. I'll read that statement out to you. A new, in speech marks, a new item, Eye Candy by Peter Egging has just hit the market and we have to say we are not, capital letters, impressed. It uses the same gimmick as our Effect Juicy, which has been on the market since 2017. We approached Peter Egging and we were told that he was unaware of Juicy and that Eye Candy was his creation. Peter is a well-established creator and knows full well the need for research. If he did not do his research, we find this staggering. We informed Peter that he was using a gimmick which was already included in our Juicy set. We actually supply three different ready-made gimmicks and not just one unfinished gimmick as a supplied with eye candy. His response was that he added an extra gimmick to do a vanish, which in his opinion was worth the price of the effect alone. There are variations of all sorts of effects on the market, but what we really don't like is that Peter has taken James's effect juicy with Starburst sweets and simply added a vanish, which we do not teach on our tutorial. With this added vanish, Peter now claims to be a new trick. In our view, it does not make it new. In reality, it is simply a different handling of James's juicy gimmick. For those reasons, we will not, capital letters, support eye candy, but will continue to support the original creator, James Keatley, and we'd encourage you to do the same. As such, we direct you to Juicy, which contains more gimmicks, has no eye candy angle sensitive vanish, the gimmicks are ready made, and contains more effects, plus it's over £10 cheaper, more for less. Do you see the point that I'm trying to make here? Um, first of all, he says that uh, uh, Peter is a well-established creator and knows full well the need for research. If he did not do his research, we find this staggering. Well, uh, it took me two minutes. Literally, it took me two minutes of Googling to find a link to uh, the abstractor on the Magic Cafe. I started off by typing stuff like, Tricks like the extractor deck, extractor deck variations. I typed in a whole bunch of them and uh, within two minutes, I got to a page on the Magic Cafe, which was made by Alexander Dekova talking about extractor and um, comparing it to uh, a routine by Tony Miller. Because Tony Miller came out with a version of this as well, which you know, whatever, came out afterwards. And then that led me then to type in abstractor, which brought me up to library. So when he says, Peter is a well-established creator and knows full well the need for research. If he did not do his research, we find this staggering. Let's take that and throw it right back to you, shall we? Uh, because within two minutes, you could have found out about the abstractor. You have here, and it's not like you didn't know it was like the extractor, because you even say over and over again, Hey, I bought this out. You said it in your interview with me before Blackpool. I've bought out the, this because the extractor wasn't on the market and I wanted to be able to offer people something that would do a similar thing. So it's very easy to find out what the abstractor is, but you found it staggering that somebody couldn't do the research when it was something that affected you, but the other way around, apparently that's, that's, that's okay. And then... You say, um, we informed Peter that he was using a gimmick which was already included in our Juicy set. His response, we did, I did an extra gimmick. Um, we don't like that Peter has taken James's Effect Juicy with Starburst Sweets and simply added a Vanish, which we do not teach on our tutorial. Well, yes, he's added a Vanish. He's also added the material that you need to do the Vanish, the fishing wire and stuff like that. And he's also added the gimmicks injection molded or 3D printed. They're made out of plastic instead of out of cardboard. Surely that's a big advantage. But there's two things there. The first thing is it's made out of plastic instead of cardboard, and therefore you can make it with your own Starburst switch. You can actually make it for whatever you want, and it's gonna be more robust than cardboard. Plastic's gonna be more robust than cardboard. But that's the equivalent of you roughing the deck versus not roughing the deck, right? That's, that's that equivalent there. And then the vanish is a little bit like the magnets, right? So what's the difference? Like. You made a statement, you made a stand about eye candy, and I agree with you 100%, Mark. I agree with you 100%. I told you that at the time. 
completely agree, without a shadow of a doubt, that eye candy shouldn't have come out and you were 100% in the right. But, but, but why are you now going on the Magic Cafe and saying, hang on a minute, this is different enough, which is exactly what you say. It's exactly what you say. You say, um, where is it? Okay, you say, here, you, you replied to me. I said, can you tell me the difference between the different tricks? And you said, I'm surprised you can't see the difference just from the demos. This is not a place to explain methods, but they are different. Magic evolves. One effect may be similar to another, but if different principles are used, they are different. Well, there's different principles are used in eye candy. You know, the vanish is different. The way that the gimmick is made is different. What's the difference here? What is the difference? And I, the reason I'm making this video, by the way, isn't really... I'm making this video for two reasons. The first reason is because so many people have asked me. But the second reason is I don't, I don't think it's fair that you, Mark, have thrown Alex under the bus. I don't think that's fair at all. That's what you've done. You, you, he's made a statement. He's made a statement saying, hey, I'm not stopping this anymore. And then you just go, oh, actually, you know, I've spoken to him. He agrees with me. And then he goes, well, I don't. And then you spend the rest of the time telling people that he's completely wrong and he's making baseless, factless statements. Well, as far as I can see, I have purchased Unboxed. I have purchased um, Abstractor. I have literally made them up. There is virtually no difference other than the treatment of the cards, which honestly, I could do the... I don't... What? Why is that a big thing? Why? I don't get it. I can do exactly the same thing without the cards being treated. I thought that when I was watching the tutorial the first time. Why are the cards being treated? I just don't understand why that's a big thing. And then the lack of the magnets, which is a big thing, but going in the other direction. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And more importantly, I don't think it's fair on... I don't think it's fair on Monster Magic, and I don't think it's fair on Alex. I don't think it's fair that you are trying to... T you, are, you, you are going on the Magic Cafe, and you are taking one of, your creator, one of your competitors who has literally just started on his journey as a Magic creator, and a Magic distributor, and a Magic producer, and you are literally turning around to anybody who will listen and say, no, Alex is completely wrong. And then there's people that are slagging him off saying, oh, he's going to be out of business in five years. And you're not going, whoa, 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 calm down here. Don't say that. You're just letting them get away with it. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. As far as I'm concerned, if people want to get unboxed, they can get unboxed. I gave it a good review. But if you want to get unboxed and you're not worried about the uh, the treatment of the cards, get Alexander Dakova's thing. It's on the library. It's like six pounds, something like that, six pound fifty. You can buy the magazine and you can learn how to do unbox without even needing to buy unbox because it's the same bloody thing. It's the same thing. And if you don't think magnets are a big an issue, then don't put the magnets in because then it will be exactly the same thing other than the treatment of the cards, which is totally unimportant. Now, I know what's going to happen moving forward because I've heard the rumours. I know I've heard the rumours. Everybody's heard the rumours. I, um, I, I know what's going to happen at some point in the next 6 to 12 months. I'm going to have a product come out and Saturn Magic are going to trash it. They are going to put it on their Sunday show and they're going to absolutely trash the ever-loving fuck out of it. They'll probably put a little statement online saying, hey, we're not stocking Craig Petty's latest trick because of X, Y, Z. And I know that will happen. I know that will happen. But you know what? I, I, I spoke to a couple of people and said, should I do this video? And... Um, and I, I was told, no, I shouldn't do this video, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I'm standing up to Alex. I'm standing up for Alex. He doesn't need someone to stand up for him, but I'm standing up for him because I feel that that's the right thing to do. And at the end of the day, that's all I've got in this industry. If I don't do what I feel is right, then what else have I got? I'm standing up for Alex because I think that Monster Magic is a good company. I think the Saturn Magic is a good company, but I think you've made a wrong call here. I think you've made the wrong call. I think that this is too close 
to Alexander Dikova's uh, abstractor. And at the bare minimum, the absolute bare minimum, you should have approached Alexander Dikova. At the bare minimum, it needed more than one little paragraph at the bottom of a page that nobody's ever going to read because they're just going to click and watch the video and that's it. It's going to need way more than that. It's going to need at a bare minimum speaking to Alexander Dikova. But you know what? You know, you do you. You do you. If you don't think, if you think, hey, Peter Egging's in the wrong because of this, but I'm absolutely in the right, that's fine. But it's not fair slagging off Alex. And the double standards in this community, the double standards that you've shown when it comes to eye candy versus abstractor is just ridiculous. So bring it on. Tell people I'm terrible. Tell people I'm awful. Trash my magic. I don't really care. I think that you're in the wrong. I think that you are absolutely in the wrong and you. I think you need to do the right thing. But you know what? Who am I? I don't have a magic shop. I'm not a magic dealer. I'm not your competitor by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just a guy that puts some tricks out every so often and has a YouTube channel where I talk crap about stuff. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm giving my opinion on something that's happening in the industry. I don't think you're right. I think that Alex has been thrown under the bus and I don't think it's fair. And I think that honestly, I don't see why you can make such a stand with eye candy and you're not making that stand with uh, with abstractor and unboxed. I don't get it. I just don't get it. So whatever. You do you. You carry on selling it. You carry on telling people that you've sold out in three days at Murphy's Magic. Well done. Well done. You and you and you and Mark Infinity can sit around and high five each other until the cows come home. Make a little 60 second video about how well unboxed has done. And while you're at it, make a 60 second video about how I'm such a piece of shit. This is my opinion. If you don't like it, I'm out.